Hey, what up world? Miles Best here, journalist, host, and lover, not a fighter of snacks. Yes. Fires, droughts, carbon emissions, all words my uncle uses instead of saying that he tooted. They're also just really bad for the earth, but they can also all be reduced with, yes, you guessed it, the help of beavers. Yes, that's right, beavers, beavers, beavers. We all thought beavers were just, you know, ugly little rats that could hold tennis rackets, but joke's on us. Cause those dudes are the unsung heroes of climate change. And they're doing it all while also being adorable. Look at them. And beaver hype came to an all time high over the last year as global warming has gotten more severe. States like California, for example, have proposed to invest a little more than $3 million in a new beaver dam restoration program, all because these little dudes are literally saving the planet. But some people seem to hesitate to get behind Beavergate. So today we're asking, why are beavers the climate change heroes we need right now? All right, so let's get into it. First and foremost, how do these toothy mother truckers actually help the environment? Big picture, beavers are basically like water benders for our ecosystem. Let's meet Dr. Emily Fairfax. She's an eco-hydrologist who studies the way that beavers can make landscapes more resilient to climate change. Yes, her actual job is to study beavers. Now she explained to me that beavers are basically climate engineers and little firefighters, all for free. So when beavers move into a landscape, they really need to make a pond for themselves. Beavers are very awkward on land. I, I deeply relate to that. And any predator can easily pick them off. So beavers' number one goal is to make a pond for themselves to live in. That means building a dam and digging a bunch of little canals out from their ponds and really what they're doing is slowing down the water, which benefits them, but it also has a huge amount of benefits for us as well. So that slowed down water has time to sink into the soil, to spread out into the floodplain. And so when you have a drought, even if that drought's going on for year after year, there's so much stored water in the earth that there's plenty of water for the plants. They can stay green and healthy, which is really important when you have something that could start a fire. The fire is gonna burn whatever's driest and easiest to burn. And in these beaver ponds, everything has stayed so wet that it's just not easy to burn. Experts say that beavers help reduce the worst impacts of droughts and floods by holding back essential water that otherwise would run off or just dry up. And while essential water, yes, sounds like a brand sponsored by Cardi B, it just means that it's water the environment needs to stay healthy and thriving. It's kind of like the environment's self-care routine. Carbon is a big buzzword in climate stuff. And there is a lot of research showing that beaver ponds can be massive carbon sinks. It looks like beavers are not only good at dealing with the effects of climate change, but also the mitigation. So they can suck that carbon out of the atmosphere to slow down climate change. And beavers are particularly special because they're a keystone species, which can be any organism from animals to plants to bacteria and fungi. And more or less, they hold a habitat together. Have you ever seen like an archway, you know what I'm saying? And it's just you have these tiny little pegs. And then there's that one in the middle. You're like, you're not really doing much. You know what I mean? You don't have much weight on you. But if we took that one out, the whole thing would come crumbling down. And that's what a keystone species is. Like if they left or they died off, the ecosystem, the biodiversity of that ecosystem would look very different. It may not even be able to adapt to the changes of the keystone species not being there. Beavers are just one species doing this kind of important climate change work. Others include elephants, wolves, otters, starfish, bees, and there's so many more. While beavers are maybe getting some play now, that wasn't always the case for our cute rodent homies. For centuries, European cultures thought beavers were just pests, who they only valued for their fur. And at one point, beavers were hunted nearly to extinction, all for these ugly hats. I mean, look at it. I mean, my scalp is just itchy just thinking about it, man. And to make matters worse, if we weren't hunting them, we were gentrifying their neighborhoods. Humans parked our little hipster booties in these streams and in the wetlands, and that caused beaver populations to nosedive by as much as 90%. So beavers used to be super abundant on this continent. There was anywhere from 100 to 400 million beavers here before the European fur trade. And that means that those beavers were living in coexistence with all of the people that were also on this continent before European colonization. So there was a really good balance between human interests, human needs, and natural beaver activities and landscape occupancy until the fur trade. Now, this long-standing idea that beavers are pests is still happening to this day. Oregon, for example, has beavers registered as a predator, even though they're strict vegetarians. So they can be hunted and trapped on private land across Oregon with few restrictions. 
Now, the irony, of course, being that, you know, Oregon is the beaver state. It's basically the state's mascot. They're on flags and license plates, but they can't be on your property, huh? Make it make sense. <laughs> And this strong response to beavers is kind of understandable if we think about the fact that, you know, most folks probably don't even remember them being around in the first place. So a lot of places that used to have beavers in the past haven't had them for maybe 200, 250 years or so. Like they were wiped out in the first wave of colonization almost entirely. And so people don't remember what the landscape looked like with beavers and their grandparents don't remember and their great grandparents don't remember. Part of that stems from a term I've heard referred to as ecological amnesia. And so then when a beaver comes back and it changes this um, honestly unhealthy little stream into a big messy wetland, they feel like that's wrong and they feel like they should fix it because it's not how things used to be. And so it cannot be correct. But despite some haters, indigenous communities here in the States have always known what was up. Many native tribes have clearly understood that the work beavers do naturally benefits humans as well. Even today, tribes are working with local governments to help restore beaver populations. They're doing things that include beaver relocation and building artificial log jams to encourage beavers to come back. And it's this difference in perspective that can change how and why we approach beavers. And that's how I came across Frankie Myers. He's the vice chairman to the Yurok tribe here in California. He focuses his work on a variety of issues impacting indigenous folks with an emphasis on environment protection and nature restoration. I think one of the key things that non, the non-indigenous community can really learn from what tribal folks have been practicing since time immemorial is this idea that we are a part of the world around us. And it, and it really seems like a really simple kind of concept, but you'd be surprised on how difficult it is uh, to kind of push this idea through towards implementation. This idea that humans are actually a part of the world, um, not you know superior to it, not below it, uh, but a part of it. It makes me think, is there a way for us humans to be the Robin to their Batman? The Jarvis to their Iron Man? Honestly, humans and beavers are more like frenemies than partners in crime. Which is odd since we're so similar. We're both mammals. I mean, they even have front doors at their houses. We have front doors. I mean, we're not all that different. In order for us to live sustainably and alongside beavers now, we have to do what we as indigenous people always have, which is live with them, build better, build smarter, uh, build in a way that's adapted to our environment instead of forcing our environment to adapt to us. Sharing a territory with an animal that can also shape landscapes and direct water flows like we do challenges our desire to be in control. But where can we find that compromise instead of, you know, defaulting to man over nature and just over engineering things like humans tend to do? I mean, think about it. Beavers are just doing what they're here on this earth to do. Something that people have recognized for years is necessary to human nature balance. And states and governments are finally starting to realize and help animals like beavers do their thing. But what do you think? Should we do more to partner with animals like beavers who could help us fight climate change? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, and if you liked this video, you should check out our video on are endangered species worth saving or can wild animals and humans coexist in cities? Let us know what you think. As always, I'm your host, Miles Best. Peace out.